Now, I'm no conspiracy theorist, even though I was the official resident skeptic on a show on the very subject, a badge I wear with pride. But this week, my skepticism went through the roof when it was revealed that a major UK firm could be considering microchipping employees as part of an effort to boost security and stop unauthorised staff accessing sensitive areas. In the words of that fabulous female poetry quartet, Vanilla, no way, no way, manamana. This is Big Brother Gone Mad, and I don't want any part of it. Research suggests that nearly half of people are unhappy at work, and it was also revealed during this year's National Inclusion Week that a quarter of British workers feel discriminated against. With statistics like this, introducing this form of spying on workers could lead to disaster. Last week, Afwa argued that Alexa was sexist. I'm more worried that smart speakers are actually nosy and that this microchipping idea is even worse. It's time we all became a little bit more cautious of intrusive tech. I understand your perspective um, and I understand why many people would be concerned and I think when I knew that we were debating this, my initial reaction was also a concern. Um, but then I started to think about it slightly differently and my thinking has kind of moved on. Okay. So you presented this scenario as very much as micro, you know, horrible companies microchipping their employees in order to breach their it privacy is. and control them. I don't really see it in that way. So when you look at what's happening with these chips, it's very similar um, technology to contactless cards. Um, most of us, I think it's like 52% or something of transactions in stores now are done contactless. So what that's doing is it's, and if you look in Sweden, for example, I think there's mm. about 4,000 people in Sweden that have opted to have these um, chips implanted in them. And um, companies in Sweden are almost offering this as like a free perk. Because if you think about it, we carry around with us our contactless cards, we have our telephones, we have our keys, um, and we carry our train tickets, all of these kind of things that we are wandering around carrying with us. So it's not a massive leap to imagine then that if you wanted, and the emphasis on the word wanted, because do I ever think a business should be clamping you down in a line and stapling you with a chip as you pass through? No, I don't, and that thought uh, fills me with dread. But if you choose as an individual that actually for convenience reasons, yeah, I don't mind having my contactless chip here and I'll just do this and it'll replace my keys or my contactless payments or my access, no why not? No way, no way. A number of years, about 10 years ago, okay, I invented this thing called the u right? Mm -hmm. And what it was, I recognised that sometimes in, in accidents or, you know, when, when people can't speak for themselves because they've been knocked unconscious or whatever, um, th there's a necessity for the emergency services who come across these people, whoever comes across, to know who they are and what they, and what they need doing to them. Are they on special medication? You know, is there an emergency phone number for these people? Blah, 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 blah. So I invented this thing called the U-Tag and you wore it either around your neck or on your wrist, OK? And if, if you were picked up by the emergency, scooped off the floor by the emergency services, they could plug it into a computer, boom, a screen came up and all the stuff that you would tell them if you were conscious was on that screen, yeah. all right? That's got to be a good thing, OK? Yeah, but... Where I worry about with these chips is if it starts controlling my car or That's it starts opening point. my front door because then I'm the old criminal now I'll go where's your chip love <laughs> right I'll have that and, and I'm in innit yeah. and also yeah. just to quickly pick up on both of your points at the end of the day your U tag is different your U tag is a device you wear exactly yeah. I do not want to chip in myself and the thing is look at this back to those statistics Half of all people are unhappy at work. A lot of most people don't get on with their line managers and people mm -hmm. that are uh, above them in the workplace. A quarter of people feel discriminated against in the workplace. My issue is who controls the, 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 the area that actually this data is transmitted to but and how choice, that can be manipulated. If it's a choice, because you said, sorry, Madge, I know you want to come in, you said, I don't want that. So if you don't want that, then surely that should be fine. I if think he it or be she is okay with it, it, period. Well, on, on the note of choice, I want to come to that because yeah. I've got something to say. But let's just have a look at what Biohacks International, which is a company, uh, which is a company yeah. that actually has these chips, says about their own chips. It says, uh, <clears throat> Biohacks is a passive near field communications device. It does not contain a battery, tracking systems, or any GPS enablements. The Biohacks install enables the carrier to increase their security in the digital world. We've accomplished to assist the Swedish national rail system to enable the Biohacks install as a replacement for paper tickets and plastic travel cards. Now, I'd like to draw your attention, folks, 
to the following word in that statement that I just read. It does not contain a battery, fair enough, tracking system, so far so good, or any GPS enablements. Now, normally the word, the word enablements yes. uh, is used in tech to suggest that you could, could enable it if, if you, you wanted, wanted to. to. Yeah. Right? So, so that, now, now here's, the, here's to. it back to your question, right? Mm. So we all recall the data Facebook breaches. Mm -hmm. Now, all of us voluntarily signed up to Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, it was voluntary, back to your key word there, voluntary. What we didn't sign up to was knowledge that Cambridge Analytica would use that data to say, for example, um, enable a political candidate that we may, hey, may or may exactly. not have supported. Yeah. And so I think <clears throat> questions around privacy and data yeah. come in. Mm -hmm. now, and security, security and safety. How much data these chips would contain. Now, so I think that's why it does need to be legislated for, because of course, uh, we all know, of course, um, and Facebook's latest revelations, that they've yeah. hired a firm to uh, look into, say, blame George Soros for Rachel, what do you a lot think? of their, you know. Um, <clears throat> I think this takes us into territory from my mind, of why on earth don't we have ID cards? I mean, if we're going to have yeah. chips implanted in our bodies I'll that give that. so much data that track our movements, enable us to pay contactless, had we had ID cards back in 2008, we probably wouldn't be leaving the EU mm. because we would know who was coming into the country, who was coming yeah. and leaving the country. You could swipe your passport in and out and there wouldn't have been this crisis over uncontrolled immigration, mm. um, which was understandable. Mm. On your chip device idea. Let's hear from somebody who really thinks it's a bad idea, but I wouldn't go so far as to legislate against it myself. I'm, okay. I'm a wait and see person. If uh, you're in a situation you need to give up a microchip under duress, you, are, you're under, you have very little um, options available to you. This could, be as go, this could be as problematic as you can't lend uh, your microchip to a colleague, to as awful as some criminal had holds you ransom, gouges out the chips out of your body and demands access to your company's place of work, all because you've had the chip implanted. Yeah, I mean, that is really worst case scenario. That's dystopian. Yeah. Totally, and also at the end of the day, we do not spend all of our time at work. So why do I want a device from work that's in me 24 hours a day, seven days a week? But the key is, why would you want that? And if you don't want that, then don't have it. No, but, but if you're back somebody, to Merchant's point, because you might be signing up for one thing, but that device can be another. used for and something else. Company, Should we look at a microchip? everybody to do it. Do you have one? Have you got one? Uh, no, I don't have one. But I have a... I have, um, no, I don't have one in my left hand that I prepared <laughs> earlier that I'm going to be walking. But this guy does look. Off he goes into oh, yeah. his first door in his office. This is about the size of a grain of rice, by the way, that's on his hand. Up he goes. Oh, in his, his wrist? No, it's kind of between the thumb and finger, yeah. look. Oh, there you go. In he goes. Finger. No messing around. And it's worth saying, by the way, that one of the companies, one of the leading companies, was actually established by a former um, professional body piercer. So what makes me laugh is the fact that so many people are repulsed by having stuff, but then people get metal in them and all that. I can see. I can, I can see some arguments for and some arguments against. Would you but I think it? what we'd all agree with is if a chip goes in my body, it's followed by a piece of fish. <laughs> 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 all right.